peace from by Ask everyone to stand and face the entrance of church where we have our newest member. One of many reasons why I enjoy baptism during a Eucharistic celebration uh, is sort of ties heaven and earth, uh, saints in heaven praying for this child and all of you also being witnesses of their baptism and praying for them. So I have an easy question and a hard question. And she, he chose her to do the easy question. What name do you give your child? Hamilton Colt. Hamilton Colt. Can I ask you how you chose those names? <laughs> We're very big Disney and Broadway. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. Now, the more challenging question. I know you brought uh, Hamilton here for baptism. What does that mean to you? Your child being baptized in the faith tradition of a Catholic church. Uh, just acceptance and guidance through the baptism of the church. And how can a community of people assist you in that endeavor, as well as the God I think just help guide through every moment and uh, making sure he stays on the right track. So this, you're asking that we help be a guide, witness, source of strength. So first of all, are you both willing to do your best sharing faith uh, with your child, teaching and guiding? Guide parents, step up for a little bit. Are you willing to establish an ongoing relationship uh, with Hamilton Colt, uh, a relationship that might establish you to be advisors and helpers and assistants to the parents uh, in their role of training their child. Yes. Hamilton Colt, we got it always in the sign of the cross. I sign the cross on your forehead. I invite your parents, your godparents, to do the same to sign the cross on Hamilton's forehead as we all sign ourselves 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So let's sing a hymn of praise and giving glory to God uh, for light and for our ability to worship her God. <laughs> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high, and, the, the, and thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord.
prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, Beloved, especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord.
Anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down, calculate the cost to see if there is enough for completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation, finding himself unable to finish the work, onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to complete. Or what king, marching into a battle, would not first sit down, decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any of you who does not denounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. The letter to Philemon is one of the shortest letters in the scripture, one chapter. And it's a request to Philemon that somehow has come part of the inspirational writings Onesimus was a runaway slave, obviously harbored by Paul in prison. She was, he was a slave of Philemon. And now, while serving Paul, Paul sends him back. And he said, I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good that you do might not be forced, but voluntary. When I was recently teaching in an eighth grade, I walked in with one of the music boards and I said, I have an experiment. And I had a group of little dog collars with those little things that buzz as they go out of things. And I said, I'm thinking if we all had one of those on your neck and every time you did something wrong, you got a shock. Do you think you would avoid doing what is wrong? They all decided yes. But when I asked, should we try it out? They all said no. <laughs> it is interesting that goodness really comes from people voluntarily accepting it. And so here we are dealing with the issue of slavery. And this is a way that he says, you might have him back forever. Honestly, that's not having your slave back. It's more like a relationship back. 
the kind that God might like. And he talks about how he was loved by himself, Paul, but will be even more to you. So he says, ask me as a partner, would you welcome him as you welcome me? Now, this ideal in Christian relationships is somewhat challenging. Trying to become one in Christ. Separating slave from free. And we know, we see often in the scriptures, neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free man, male or female, they were all equal in the sight of God. But in the infrastructure of the Roman Empire, I assure you this slavery was at the core. If we weren't going to persecute someone because they believe in Christ, you would find out you could do so because they rejected slavery or set people free. What a horrible thing to do. So I am pleased that the letter doesn't tell what happened. If I were writing a novel, I would have Onesimus first run away and not show up. And then after he kept thinking of how much Paul taught him, and Father Paul, he would show up and my novel would end when he was walking in the door and we all wonder whether Philemon would accept him or not. We have an interesting gospel passage, and I was thinking how interesting it was at the time of baptism. Jesus is looking at this large crowd of people following him, and I suspect, I wasn't there by the way, that the crowd was following him because they either wanted free bread or wanted to see a miracle, hoping to see him walk across water. And all of a sudden, he comes up with these strong passages. And incidentally, it would take six homilies to go through Haiti, father and mother. You know he doesn't encourage that. But all of a sudden, talking about the cross, your child was just crossed. Right from the beginning of baptism, we talk about the cross, carrying the cross. So he's saying, if you don't want to be my disciples, you're going to have to take your own cross up. And life may not always be as easy as you want. Paul, who said he was an old man, was 59, by the way, when he died. So it's before then. And he is now trying to guide and create relationships. And here Jesus is telling us that to be his disciple, to be baptized in Christ, don't forget there's a cross. I do not know what crosses everybody carries in this church, nor do I know what Hamilton will carry. But the promise of Christ is that if we are disciples, we will indeed carry the cross. All are invited to join us around the font. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint
Almighty, ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan and the spirit of evil, and to bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light, we humbly beseech you. Set Hamilton Colt free from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory. Grant that your spirit may dwell in him. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, we pray that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on Hamilton by water and the spirit. O oh God, who by invisible signs accomplish wondrous effects through the sacrament of baptism and through all the sacraments, and who in many ways have prepared water in your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that for the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end of vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from the slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people who would be baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung on the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood. Then after his resurrection, he commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, graciously unseal for her the font of baptism. And may this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the human nature created in your image washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the squalor of life of old may be found worthy to rise in the life of the newborn children through water and the Spirit. And may the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this one, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into his death they rise again with life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. To the community, to parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, this child is presented to receive from the love of God new life in the water and the Holy Spirit. On your part, you need to strive to bring Hamilton up in faith, that the divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin, may grow in him day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin, profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are to be baptized. For those of you who are married, if you use the simple phrase, I do, and it was just sort of a weak, well, oh, I do, it wouldn't mean much. We need a good, firm ID, I do, in rejecting what is harmful and in believing what is right. So I ask everyone, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And this is our faith, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, joined you to his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, for as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, may you live always with everlasting life. Your garment has that been part of the family? 70 years old? It tells you something about the birthing process that comes from the history of people and families, and relationship, and faith. So see the garment, the white garment you wear, and this symbol is placed around you, an outward sign of your Christian dignity. Bring that dignity unstained into light everlasting. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, your child has been enlightened by Christ. Walk as a child of light, bearing faith by what he says and does through Christ our Lord. And may they, and may, by preserving the faith, may they run to meet the Lord Jesus when he comes with the saints in the heavenly kingdom. May the Lord Jesus guide and direct him through Christ our Lord. Amen. You want to hold him up that we might greet and welcome him. Dad. <laughs> be confirmed and celebrated. So let us continue celebrating this Eucharist with it. May those who have dedicated their lives to serving Christ in the church be blessed with strength and perseverance to remain faithful to their promises. We pray to the Lord. Lord May world leaders be led by the Spirit in attending the needs of the weakest and most vulnerable, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who suffer from illness or disease be comforted by the presence of Christ walking with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
May those of us gathered here be blessed with the grace to let go of the things of this world in order to pursue the things of God. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they live in the light and peace of God's presence in heaven forever. We pray to the Lord. For Jim Klusner, for whom this Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Let us pause to remember those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, continue to bless us, shower your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. During preparation, our hymn is number 801, Take Up Your Cross, number 801. sick and for sinners, became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. So with angels and saints, we exalt and we bless your name and we sing the hymn of your glory 
and without end, we acclaim. said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Bring your church, O oh Lord, to perfect faith and charity with Francis our Pope, Dennis our Bishop, Bishop, Priest, Deacon, the entire people that you have made your own. And open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions 
to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to new hope. And remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your faith. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. William, and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him, with him, and him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May we be Christ's peace to our sisters.
Our gathering hymn will be number 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 935, draw near, number 935.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word, the food of the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life through Christ our Lord. Amen. RCIA begins this Thursday, September 8th. If you or someone that you know are interested in becoming Catholic, please contact Father Scott Morgan and take a bulletin for more information. Please consider spending time in adoration of the Eucharist. Our weekly Holy Hour is on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. here in church. The Sacrament of Reconciliation is also offered during that Holy Hour each week. There will be no 11 a.m. Mass this Monday in the chapel because of Labor Day. The mass times for that day will be 7 a.m. at St. Teresa and 9 a.m. at St. William here in church. Our closing hymn is number 881, Lift High the Cross, number 881. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Ask God for his blessing. The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine upon their child. May grace graciously bless Hamilton's mother. She gives thanks to God for her child. May she always remain united with him in thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child, so that together with his wife, they are teachers in the ways of faith. May he be the best of teachers, bearing faith by what he says and does through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Holy God Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, by water and the Holy Spirit has given new birth to eternal life, abundantly bless these God-parents and all who are present here. May he make us always, everywhere, active members of his people, that we may bestow his peace on all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Thanks.